three, two, one. I gotta learn how to play the drums. Do you? Or do something. You, do you I, gotta, re- I gotta learn how to play. Do you really need to learn how to play drums, or you just want to learn? I don't really want to learn how to play the drums. My neighbors would be pissed. But Man, I used to own like five guitars. Yeah. I don't know if you if if we were we knew each other when I had guitars. Yeah. I don't know if you knew I had guitars. No, but, but I didn't. But you got to teach me how to play that. No, I don't know how to play. That's the oh, problem. Geez. They they turned into like artwork. <laughs> I took I took guitar in college. You kidding? I, I I played guitar in the army. I can't play. Sh- I, I was also a Spanish linguist. You know, I can barely order a beer. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> like uh, right? Dude, left or right? right? Uh, it's, I don't know how this yeah. stuff works. Like you. You have to like do it all the time yeah, for yeah. it to work. Dude, so I was in uh, when I was in the Navy one time. I was we went around. I was an aircraft carrier. We went around South America and and pulled into uh, Acapulco. And I had taken Spanish all through high school uh, and college, and it, it was you know not probably as good as yours from go, from going to DLI or whatever. But uh, I could I could kind of speak Spanish. You know I could get by. I pull into Acapulco. It's it, Acapulco is like a resort place for people from Mexico City. It's not a lot of Americans there, so yeah. not a whole lot of English speaking people there. Um, by the by, the Wednesday, my brain hurt so bad it was like <laughs> trying doing, to trying to think in it, Spanish. Oh yes, trying to translate right. Yeah. On Thursday, I had this like explosion in my little brain, and all of a sudden, I didn't have to translate anymore. I could just speak Spanish. It was awesome. It lasted for about a month. Yeah. And then it went away. Yeah. I, it, I, it's crazy how that works, right? Yeah. But I mean, I, when I was doing it, I, I can remember it. You go years and years without doing it, and they just can't. And, and I mean, yeah. I, think, I think playing a musical instrument is very similar. Um, is that going to be the topic this week, or are we going to talk no, about but TSP? I, you know, if we have to talk about TSP, we can do it. <laughs> to be honest, this we is going to be a bit of a controversial uh, episode. Yes. Um, I like controversy. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff I don't in like here. drama, but I like controversy. Well, fortunately, we're on we're on one end of the camera, so drama's <laughs> drama will play out on Facebook later. Yeah, we won't. That's that's fine. Um, all right, weekly update show, fifteen August, twenty twenty one. Bum, 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 bum. So easy stuff. The market this week uh, again, it was a little bit mixed. iFund was leading again last week. The iFund was up over a percent. This week, it's again the leader up one point three eight percent. C fund up. Uh, 0.7%. S fund was down half a point. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, because rates, we were, we were talking about how the C and I fund should outperform the S fund um, because it, the S fund is more uh, affected by interest rate movement. But this week, rates actually went uh, back down because the F fund went up, which we're going to get to. Um, and the S fund still went down. So not sure what to say about that. Uh, it was a really, really big week for the F fund. And uh, we're actually not going to get to that on the show. But if you read it, you if you are a, a subscriber to the site and you get the weekly update newsletter, uh, it's, a, it's a big deep dive into... Um, the F fund used as an example of absolutely classic Fibonacci retracement and extension levels and uh, an Elliott wave count. Okay. So we're going to do what happened this week. Take the fi- Facebook question of the week, which I fixed Facebook, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> we're going to look at the L funds. Tons of opinions and positions about whether or not uh, the L funds are a good thing, and we'll we'll talk about all that. Um, bonus chart is going to be KRE, which is the regional banks, and then we'll we'll do. There's not too much to talk about, to be honest, with the 18 month weekly charts because the markets are just rolling on in a pretty um, lazy August. We have not seen any serious breakdown. We haven't seen any breakdown. Um, that we would sort of expect to see on a seasonal basis in August, September, October. Okay. <clears throat> this was last week's uh, C fund one month hourly. We had had this big run up from the 19th, from mid uh, July. 
and we had a ABC consolidation, and we were, were expecting some kind of move move higher on uh, an intraday basis. And so we fast forward to this week. We have the run up. We have the ABC correction, and this is where we were at the end of last week, and we did continue to get this pretty mild run-up throughout this week. So on an intraday basis, everything looks good. It's really, actually really good that going into Friday, the last hour, because the, this is each tick on this chart is one hour, so the last hour of trading on a Friday was was up and on big volume. Great, um, great way to go into the weekend. Facebook question of the week. <clears throat> I just became a regular as a rural mail carrier on January 2nd, 2021. I'm 28 years old. I've read about moving funds to CSNI. So I just did 60C, 20S, 20I. I know absolutely nothing about TSP. Did I do the right thing? Any and all input is welcome. Thanks, guys. Okay. I love that question on Facebook. We had a, a butt ton of answers, as you could expect. Solid cubic butt ton. Yeah, solid. I mean, everybody loves to pile onto these questions. And it shouldn't be a surprise. And it's, but I want to make sure, right? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm always the disclaimer guy. But it's what our Facebook group is for. Yes. Right? What is surprising to us, and this is the kind of uh, lead into what you're going right. into, I think, is how many people are are let it ride, folks? Regardless of what percentages they 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 put out or you know yep. go into this L fund or do, do whatever, they were they were really kind of let it ride, buy and hold kind of yep. you know come from. Now now maybe you know they just didn't have a lot of time to put that in context, and that's what they meant to do like now. Because what where 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 we come from is. I don't know what's the market doing, right? Right. Let's talk about what the market's doing before we talk about what percentages I should be in. Right. And we're certainly not in the buy and hold, let it ride crowd. No. So it's it's kind of I don't know what I what I'm really curious to find out, and this is why I'm kind of bringing it up is as you guys see, you know Jerry's discussion about this question. Please put in the comments to this video. Hopefully, you're watching it. If you're not, it's just us. <laughs> if you're not, we won't be in the comments. <laughs> there won't be comments. Um, you know, put in the comments like, hey, I'm in the group, but I'm a buy and hold person, which would be, which is interesting to us because I'm like, well, okay, well, that's not really what the group is about. Are we doing a bad, <laughs> are we doing a bad job of like explaining what the group is about? Yeah, yeah. Or, and it's not that we think buy and hold is a bad thing. That's not no, the case. No, it's, it's a methodology. Yeah. Our methodology is just very different. And yeah. so it strikes me as odd sometimes when there's like overwhelmingly, res right. overwhelming response. Right. Now, maybe it's the people that are not buy and hold, like the thousands others that are in our group that are just like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump into this. Right. So they could right. just be quiet. Right. right. And watching the, watching the combined. Right. right? And right. so I kind of feel like there's a little bit of that. If you are in that group. Chime in. Chime in, please. Yeah. yeah tell us yeah. like, Hey, no, I just, I just watch the shit show. I don't participate. <laughs> right. 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 I don't jump into it. I just watch it, right. which is like how I do a lot of Facebook. Sure. Like I don't, yeah. you know, except for our group, like on personal stuff, like I don't get involved in like a back right. and forth. Right. But like for this, it's like really interesting that predominantly the, the feet, the feedback in those, and there was probably 20 or 30 i think answers yeah at least yeah and and yeah. going so anyway yeah to back back so to your as you as you would imagine the overriding answer was you should be 50c 50s and let it ride let it ride um so i think to what you were saying before if you're a member of the if you're a subscriber to the site you know that we are uh, fully invested in the stock funds right now. Right. And we have been since July. So uh, it's we're not 50-50 CNS, but we're 100% invested in the stock in the funds. stock funds, right? which would be CSNI. Which would be CSNI. <clears throat> so as I'm going through the rest of this, you got to take it in context because uh, this isn't going to be like a chicken little kind of 
um, discussion. So for, first thing, I'm not going to answer the question, to be honest, to be like up, up front. Up, yeah, we like never really answer the I'm question. I'm not answering this question. Because the it's it's in the wrong context for us. It's like the real question is, is what is the market doing and what should I do because right, of it? Right, right. That's mean, the, it, always the question for us anyway. All I know when I'm reading this is the same thing that all these people that gave an answer to know, right? Mm-hmm. They read the question just like I did. They don't, who, she, she said, she gave some details. I shouldn't have said she, but now I already did. Yeah. She gave some details. Which about, I'm actually really glad that people are being open enough to like, hey, give me feedback, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's great. And I, I really hope that, um, you know, get some education out of this. I hope she watches. Yeah, I right, really right. Do. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I do too. We should send her the link personally anyway for the, yeah. to the show. But um, so, you know, 28 years old, awesome. Uh, just came into the government at the beginning of 2021. Great. Um I don't know anything about TSP and any input is welcome. That's all we know. Dude, that was, that was my 28 year old self. Sure. I mean, yeah. thousand percent, no clue. I had a job to do TSP can wait. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I had nothing, I mean, you know, I, it wasn't until my thirties that I started paying attention. Right. So, okay. That's, that's, that's sort of the point. Like if the question, if I'm reading it correctly, wants to know, these are my Sort of my circumstances, mm-hmm. at least the, the outline of it. Yeah. Um, what should I do? The the presumption from my part is, what should I do now and just l- leave it there? Mm-hmm. And and so that's why I, st- I said, right now we are fully invested in the stock funds. Mm-hmm. And we'll be fully invested in the stock funds until the market tells us we shouldn't be. So when you answer a question like this on Facebook... Um, if the presumption is tell me what what to do or all input is is wel- welcome, um, are you asking for an answer for right now, for the next month, or the forever. next six months, or forever? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the answer should be, hey, the market's going up. Be in the stock funds when the market's going up. Right. When the market's I going I down. I didn't really read it as, you know, like, hey, what should I do forever? Like when I read it. Yeah. Uh, I, I did get a sense that it's like, you know, hey, we, First of all, it was just the question is like, really, like, what the hell should I do? Yeah, yeah. And in my mind, being very biased, I was thinking to myself, download our ebook, right? Read right. that, read the book right. that we just wrote that tells you as best we can how to manage your TSP. We don't tell you how, uh, uh, how you should do it. We tell you the ways to do it, right? And, and it's not just our way, right? right? We list all the ways yep. that you can manage basically any retirement account, IRA, 401k, TSP. Yep. We talk about TSPs here. So then at the end of it, we tell you what we do. And we're like, this is where we fit into all of this kind of theoretical ways of approaching the game. This is where we have said this works for us. And so I I don't know. I haven't found anything better yet to a new person that says, I know nothing about TSP than the the book we wrote other than like reading everything at TSP.gov and probably not understanding any of it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 not I, I like business. the ebook, especially for people that are, that are new. It's, well, you wrote it. You should like it. Well, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I do. I think, I think, I mean, and the feedback that we've got That's has really consistently great. been, I wish I had this book when I first started the government. Yeah, I, I do too. That's why we wrote it. Yeah. I mean, I wish I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. When I was okay. 18 years old, man, I would have loved to have that. I wouldn't have, yeah. I wouldn't have paid attention to it, but I would have remembered it. And then yeah. my 25-year-old self and 28-year-old yeah. self would have yeah. been clicking. Yeah. All right, but back to the question. Okay. So, so let's, let's what's kinda, our answer? Let's kind of get into some of this. Yes. Uh, we'll break it down a little bit. So first things first, let's get a little bit of perspective. And it's funny that you say um, your sort of the lifespan of your service because mine, <laughs> mine basically started in 1990. Right, I got out of college. Yeah, mine was eighty nine. Yeah, so, so same. So, but the same. So this yeah. this chart. You were just older in college, and I was <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of, out of high school kind of, and going yeah, to the military. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So in nineteen ninety, I I got out of college, got in the navy. Um, I mean, TSP wasn't a thing in the military, and we're not going. We don't have to get into all that. It, it, it's not really important. The important um, thing is perspective of time. Yeah. So this is the C fund. This is what the C fund has done over the course of our um, investment. Lifetime, mm-hmm. okay. So back in 1990, when I was getting into uh, the Navy, and then in 95 when I got into the federal government, 
this is this is what the sea fund was was doing and if if tsp had been available back then in the navy um and in the government as it is now in 95 which it wasn't uh, it was more of an allotment kind of thing and so you, you couldn't move your money every day you couldn't do that until like 2002 or three but this is what the sea fund looked like during my whole investment lifetime while i was employed <clears throat> so from a Let's say I could have done TSP like we do it now from 1990. The market was going up. I was making contributions. Great. At some point, I had some number of shares in 2000, right? And we all remember from the basically 95 to 2000 was a huge tech run-up, right? <clears throat> so at the top in 2000, I had some number of shares and however many shares I had, doesn't matter. Each one of those shares was worth $1,500, okay? Three years later, the bottom in 03, those shares were worth $750. So my account, regardless of how many shares I had, my account balance was 50% less <laughs> than it was at the top, right? So then I, I keep contributing, that's fine. My account balance goes up over the next several years until the top in 07. But, Jerry, you were buying low back there. Let's yeah. talk about that when you get done with all this. Yeah. No, I, I was buying low. And, right. and, and I, I, was, I was buying more shares. Right. And, and as I bought more shares along the way. But if you stayed in, you lost 50% of your, of your balance. Yes. Right. It, I mean, it was, it's a paper loss, right? <laughs> Uh, it's paper I, I don't loss, call it paper when I, I see know. my account drop by right. 50%. Right. <laughs> so, so regardless, at some point, I have X number of shares, again, at the top here in 2007. And then by the bottom in 2009, while my back in here in 07, I'm back to $1,500 a share, $1,500 per share. By the bottom in 09, I have lost 55% of the value of my account. Let's back up just a second for that one that one dip, right? The okay. first one, right? Because yeah. that's a good example of uh, drop from fifteen hundred to let me go back to the chart fifteen hundred to one thousand, right? Uh, fifteen hundred to seven fifty. I'm sorry, seven fifty. So fifty yep. percent drop. Yep. How long did it take you if you if you did the whole let it ride? Yep. Right. If you took the let it ride route, how long did it take you to get back to where you were? Where did, where is that on the chart? So. From the top in 2000 to the top in 2007, seven years. Seven years yep. of letting it ride to get back to where you were in 1999 or 2000. That's 2000. Yep, 2000. Yep. To 2000. Right. Seven years you had to wait and chew on your fingernails yep. till you got back to there. Back and to and nothing else you can do if you're letting it ride, you're letting it ride. Right. It's too late. Right? Oh, yeah. So right. I just want to point that out. That is always, to me, I, I like that part of the chart because it is a, it's an easy number. Yeah. Right. And and the, and it really did that. It's not. This isn't theoretical. <laughs> no. Like that's isn't exactly what it that's did. What happened? Yeah. yeah. So you lost fifty percent of your account, yep. and then it took you seven years to get it back. Now, yes, yes, I know you're you're contributing. You're buying low. Yep. You're doing all those things, but that's new money, yes. and the money I had dropped by fifty percent. That's the part that everybody wants to glaze past. Yep. And it, and if if for any reason I had a million dollars sitting in there, I had five hundred thousand. That's right. Yeah. So. Anyway, I always like to point that out because yep. that's the part people that like to talk about buying hold or, you know, buying low or doing all the, like you forgot about that part. Yeah. Like, and I've watched my account drop and it's a, not a good feeling. No, it's not. It's, all right, back it's to the really chart. Not. So we're at 2000. So we're at 2000 at the high. Our account has dropped in half by 2003. It's come back to where it was by 2007. You're now down 55% Ooh. by the bottom in 2009. That's, and then it took until... It recovered quicker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of. It, it also fell much quicker. <laughs> yeah. Um, then it took until 2013. 13 is here. 2013 to get back to 1,500 again. They call that the lost decade. So from 10 years of your life. 13 years. 13. 13 years, from 2000 to 2013, the market basically went sideways. You guys have noticed that Jerry's way quicker at math than me. 
I'm not, not math. A, I just know this chart. I'm not like a math. Upside I know, down and inside out. You do know out. this chart. Yeah. So, so twice, twice in a career, a 13-year uh, uh, period of a career, right? Yeah. Uh, if you were 100% invested in the C fund, yeah. you took two separate 50-plus percent losses in your account. And it's not to say that you would have been. That's not the point of this, right? The point is, is that could have been any chart. Sure. It happens to be one of the the uh, um, stock funds and one that most people are, are always say BN. I mean, it's right? the C fund. Yeah. yeah. And so during 13 years, you took two massive dips just to get back to where you started. Started, yeah. At, at the top. At 2000, yeah. yeah. Sure. So I started here in, in 1990, right? Mm -hmm. By 13. Nice little now, chunk that so we had a we had a big move i mean from from 1990 to 13 we were down here i don't know c fund was i don't know say 100 um so to get up to 1500 that's a giant move but to get there i had to stomach two 50 plus percent drops and basically a flat market for 13 years so from 90 uh 10 years 20 years, 23 years. Over that 23 years, so almost an entire career span, that's what happened. So and, we're going to get, get back to, the, to this, this and as you person's get question. Farther along in your career, right, you start to realize that really the new money that I'm putting in has, has so little Much impact less, right. compared to the snowball that I have. I want right. that snowball to have compounding, right. Right? right? I want it to compound. And compounding, the math is your friend, Yeah, but oh, yeah. not the new money. The, the math is your friend when the market's going up. Yeah. The math is your enemy. unbelievable enemy when the market's going, going down. down. Well, what do I do? How do I get out, Jerry? Yeah. Well, it's actually pretty, pretty simple. Uh, if you're paying attention to the market. If you're paying attention to the market. So so okay. So that that's that's kind of the perspective. So say we say we continued on here from from 2013. Uh, the market obviously has been going in this. What's huge the most recent dip? COVID. Yeah, right? COVID. Yeah. Co are you are you on the chart? Yep. Yeah. COVID right there that I just circled. Um, that that was a 34 percent loss on the C fund from the top in February to the bottom in March. Yeah, uh, thirty-four. And as we've pointed out several times, why most people, even those that are following us or listening to us or whatever, kind of brush that off is it was such a hard dip. Yeah, it was thirty percent, but we were right back up. Right back. It was not like it the wasn't 2000, like the two previous ones, right? Two thousand. Right. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It could have been. Thankfully, it wasn't. But there've there've been more of those in the past than the quick dipping up. Yeah. And so yeah, we got kind of lucky that it bounced back quickly. We could have easily spent years sure, for sure. getting back. Yeah. Thankfully we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. And and you don't know that unless you're looking at multiple time frames of the charts. Mm. Um, that's what kills me about people answering these questions. You have to look at the charts and you have to have You have to look a, at the market. The, Let's the just mar say the market. The market right? Yeah. On different time horizons. Yeah. O otherwise you don't really have a perspective of what you're talking about. Yeah. So that's why I started with this thirty-year chart, and we're gonna we're gonna narrow it in here All right, let's uh, do that. in a second, right? So, okay, here is this is the whatever nineteen ninety to to present. Now we're just gonna look at two thousand nine. So this uh, basically this part of the chart right here. And we always say this is a great place to kind of start it, with, with your with your macro view. If yeah. you're if you're doing a chart to, to get some big perspective, yep. this is the part. This is the year frame, year time frame yes. you want to look at. This is about as far out as you really have. You don't to really go. need to go back farther. Yeah. I mean, the only reason I did this 1990 to present is is to just point Show out your, a little bit more perspective. Yeah, and we were both in the gov that whole time in, in this whole chart. <laughs> right, the whole chart. This yeah. is a, I mean, because we just we well, both mine, retired. Mine ended, like, mine ended at 15, but yours is just now. Well, yeah, I mean, your yours yours ended at 15. Yes. It was the market's high, high, right? Yep. Mine was like in here somewhere, and the market was higher, but uh, similar enough because we both had those dips. But we're still managing it the same. Same, okay. So we go forward to two thousand nine, which was the last significant bottom that we have to work with. And as we all know, the market has been killing it. The C fund has been killing it uh, ever since the bottom in two thousand nine, until we get to COVID. Right, we have this thirty-four percent drop in COVID, and 
you know, like Han said a minute ago, the, the, it, it came down really fast and came back up really, really fast. Okay. So I just, I've put up this chart before. I just sort of eyeballed this median line. Okay. The blue line that's there just pretty much bisects the middle of the whole move from 2009 to where we are now. And, and so the price kind of, you know, oscillates up and down along that, that median line. This, this top right here is 22% down to 3,500. So let's say, let's say the market takes a couple years. Let's say this is, this is the top. Let's pretend this is the top. And the market takes a few years to come down and we get to 3,500. And we hit that median line. Forget about even going below the median line, which we know it's going to happen. That's a 22% loss in the value of your account right now. So for, for as close as I'm going to get to answering this person's question on Facebook, here's 2021. I got in into federal service right there. You got into federal service? Yeah, the person answering the, asking the oh, question. Oh, she did. Yeah. Not you. Get, not not you. me. Sorry. It's like you got out there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got almost, you. yeah. I got you. She gets into federal service right there. The market's going up. That's awesome. If I was to answer the question, I would do it like this. We are in the, the, this move, the rate, the, the angle, right? That up angle. If you looked at it on a, on a bigger chart, even if you went back to here, this, this angle, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's not sustainable. This, this angle is not sustainable. And, and that chart proves it. This angle is ridiculous. It's not, not, it's no way it's sustainable. No, no. And you can see that looking all the way back there. Just right. draw those three lines and see lines. Yeah. at some point it corrected. Right, right. Yeah. This, this is a sustainable rate right here. Then the tech bubble began, and it became unsustainable. Then the housing bubble began. We had a double top, unsustainable market crashes. We get a, a relatively sustainable. Uh, I mean, I say relatively. I, I don't think I don't think this is a, a great. It would have been much better if we had progressed this way because it, it could have went that way forever. Um, but that's not how the market works. Not like how I would like it to be. Imagine <laughs> that. Um, this angle is, is one thing. This, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. So that's perspective. And now here we are. This is the angle from 2009. This almost straight up angle since the bottom in March 2020. And you get into the government right there. And the question is, what should I do? The answer I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say is, this is an unsustainable up angle. If you just did nothing other than draw the channel lines, and when the price breaks down below that channel line, this, this is, is going to be a significant loss, right? But when it breaks that channel line, it's the beginning of a serious move down. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get back in. Get, yep, get back in. But Go but to the G. This is a dangerous place to be getting in to the government. It's, it's on the lines of getting into the government like here <laughs> or here. Mm -hmm. You're getting into the government here. I don't know how high. I could, can, it keep, can it keep going like that? I mean, maybe. Yes, but you have to keep an eye on it. Yes, that's all we're saying. So, yeah. like, like we were talking about. We're, we're we, saying you can't set it and forget it. Right. We are 100% invested in the stock funds right now. We're going to get, if the market keeps going like this and keeps going straight up, we're going to get all those gains. And I'm telling you, <laughs> this is a very dangerous place to have the mindset of, ah, oh, the market always goes up. It's going to go up forever. And, and uh, I'm just going to let it ride in the CS. If you CMS. don't believe us, all you have to do, if you want to watch the fundamental analysis on any given you know, CNBC, Bloomberg, whatever you want to watch, sure. that everyone agrees yeah. that this isn't sustainable. Okay. Nobody knows how long, right? Right? No, none of us do. There's right. no crystal ball. Yeah. We just know that it's not. So when Jerry's talking about drawing that channel line, 
if that's all you do and you say to yourself, when it, when it blips out of there, I'm out. And then I'm just going to watch and wait. Yeah. Now your money's safe, right? right? You're not losing money. You might have lost a little because it's got to get out of the channel. But even that alone is a way better way, way to manage your TSP than throw it into the market and just close your eyes. Yeah. Right? And yeah. hope and wish. And yeah. So. I mean, if we take another, let's just say it's just a 50% uh, move like this one. Right. We're at 44.67. So we go down to 2,200. And say 2250 right ouch that's that's a 50 percent loss and uh it doesn't look like that big of a dip on this chart yeah because it's a big chart because it's it's a logarithmic uh scale and so could could the c fund come back down to 2250 absolutely (laughs) that's to be honest the best case scenario um, on the next major correction. I don't want to get into all that right now. We've talked about it in uh, past shows, and we're going to talk about it going forward because depending on the Elliott wave count, this is a four. And if this is a four and this is a five, then the next ABC correction should come down to the previous four, which would be that. So regardless of how far up the C fund keeps going, at some point, according to the Elliott wave theory, it's going to correct. it should correct back down to somewhere around 2250 anyway. So uh, that's a lot more of the stuff that we talk about in the members only group. And uh, if you guys are watching the show and your eyes just rolled in the back of your head, I can, <laughs> I can understand it. Yeah, we just did our members only. So the people that are members of our site, not members of the group, right? right? Uh, they subscribe to our site. Uh, every month we come in after the PIP is, is, is pushed out to yep. everybody, right? And so we talk performance. We've talked about how we've performed and we collectively, yep. you know, if, if you're following our moves, which yep. basically, if, no, if you aren't familiar with our subscription service, uh, we do analysis that, uh, you know, other people don't get to see, right? It's behind, right. B- behind um, the paywall. The yeah. paywall. And, and also, really, more importantly, is... You know, we throw out alerts when we move our money, right. which is is when we think that these different changes are going to happen. Right. And if you're following along, then that validates your decision to say, "Hey, I want to get out too." Right. Um, and you know, I, I started following this. Uh, Jerry, can you go back to the 1990 chart? Yeah. Uh, the middle there on the on the on the way up, uh, 2000. Let's say four, right? That is when I really started uh, following your methodology. And then in 2008, when we took that dip, yep. we were out. We were out right about we were out. there. I've said this many times on the show, and I, don't, I really don't say the story to kind of be flippant or funny because it was sad. But I literally sat in my – I was in a cubicle yep, at that cube, time. Yep. I was sitting in my cubicle and listening to grown men cry, grown yep. women, um, yep. about how much they had lost, right, in their – it just – in their in their in their TSP, and now we're looking at like how many more years do I have to stay in yeah. to to recoup this right? And 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 there was a, a pretty large group of us that were following you at that point, yeah. you know, internally uh, in our agency, and all of us were looking around, going, I don't know, man, I didn't take that loss, yeah. and that's what I really started to pay attention to technical analysis and, and this methodology because at the end of the day. You didn't have to be perfect at it. You just had to be, you just, like you said, like you draw that channel line, yep. goes out of that, get out. What's the worst case scenario? You, you, get you, wait, you wait till you get back in. <laughs> yeah. It changes direction and you get back yeah. in. But if you just set it and forget it, if you let it ride, if you buy and hold, if you do what most of the folks in, in the group were, were answering to that, I just, I can't stomach that. I can't see telling someone who's just come in the government, uh, okay. go back to that slide that you can show you know, there yeah. telling someone that just came in the government, Hey, let it ride on that angle. You're right there. Let it ride. That's I, no, no, put it in, put, go in. I mean, we're in sure, but keep your eye on it Yep. and get out. If you see it change directions, because yep. I know you're, 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 you've got a long time to, to, to recoup that and sure. all the blah, blah, blah. I got it, but I don't want, I don't want to see somebody take that hit. <laughs> no. I don't care if they have a hundred thousand or 50,000. If you got fifty thousand in your account, you're just starting out, 
and 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 it goes down to twenty five thousand. What? No. On, on a percentage basis, it's the same. And and to to grow the snowball that you're trying to to get to, you want to hold that money. Yeah, I mean, th- those first ten years are the most important to make that snowball grow. Because you want to get that that account as big as you can. So now, in your next twenty years, you know, a lot of people are in yeah. for thirty years uh, or more. That that's when it starts snowballing. Yeah, and that's yeah. when that compounding works. The, this this the the thing about you know you come into the government here and you're looking at it and you're going the market's going up everything's great let's say the market keeps going up and you get up to here awesome at some point it comes back down just to the median line you're you're below where you even started at zero you're negative <laughs> i mean yep <laughs> all right I think we've expressed our yeah. <laughs> our right. thoughts enough. Okay, so now we're going to get into the really controversial part. Of the- <laughs> Holy cow! It gets it only gets, gets better? better. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. it gets better. Nice. Yeah, I got to take a drink. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any way to take you off camera <laughs> when you take a drink. That's when I okay. when I when I take a drink, I always go away from you. You know, because yeah, yeah. I don't want people to have to hear it. But I'm a little a little noisier when I take a drink than you are. All right. The L funds. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Our favorite. All right, look. There are a lot of ways to play the game. Lots of people love the L funds. They're easy to understand. Uh, It's certainly the methodology that gets pushed to us from the TSP.gov site. They're based on the idea that you can be more aggressive early in your career and more conservative later in your career. Okay, the L funds definitely represent the conventional wisdom in terms of retail uh, retirement investing whether you're in the government or outside the government. L funds are life cycle funds. Um, and there are life cycle funds in every retirement plan that you look at. So L funds are set it and forget it strategy. Uh, they're not designed to be traded. You pick the fund that matches your retirement date and you stick with it through the market ups and downs. That is how the strategy is designed. You stick with it. Uh, can the L funds be combined with an active management strategy like, like what we're talking about, uh, this technical analysis based? I don't really think so. Uh, they're two completely different strategies. And so let's just take a look. Well, yeah, I mean, good. I think there's, I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some people that disagree with you. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I kind of think there's, there are. And I really wish those people would articulate not why they think the L, you can use the L funds that way, why they think doing it that way is better than just separating it. Because the L funds are a combination of the CIS and FG, yep, yep, right? Yep. So why, why would choosing the L fund for a given time, yep. right, using it like a, uh, a portfolio, mm-hmm. you know, a, as it is, uh, and playing the game of moving between L funds or L fund sure. to, to CNS, like... Tell us why you think that's a better methodology than because they're designed to just kind of let it ride, and yeah. and and it will it will recalculate as your as your career goes to more aggressive to less aggressive, right? right? Uh, regardless of risk, because you don't know what the market's regardless doing. of market risk, uh, it yeah, does not take risk. market risk. Into, it doesn't into care a, about market risk, no. and that's what we care about. Yeah, right. So. All right, so let's just kind of look at the L funds. We did this, a similar kind of thing with uh, F fund last week, but so if you don't you don't have to log in. You just go right to the tsp.gov site, um, and you go to learn about fund options, uh, and you go to the L funds, and this is the first page that comes up. So let's just kind of talk about the the options on the left. If you hit those drop downs on the left, um, so how to invest, okay. We offer a variety of options for your retirement. You can choose your own mix of investments from short term US treasuries, which is the G fund. um, Or you can do domestic and international stocks, which is the CS and I funds. Or if you prefer, they would prefer that you choose this. Um, you can choose one of the life cycle funds, the L funds, that use a professionally determined investment mix designed to deliver a balanced approach to investing based on when you'll need your money. So 
a professionally determined investment mix. Don't get that confused that there's somebody, some professional that is managing this for you. Uh, That's not what's happening. It's a very simple algorithm. Um, There is no one who's looking out for you trying to maximize your TSP in the L funds. We're going to get into it uh, here a, a little bit about how it works, but there's no one pulling the levers trying to make you money. Uh, investor types. If you hit that tab, basically what the page says is they break it down into early career, mid-career, and nearing retirement. Okay, so there's, it's worth hitting that tab. The before you invest, kind of a cool uh, page. It, it, you open up that page and it asks you to enter the year that you were born and then the site brings you to the appropriate L fund based on your age. Again, nothing to do with the market, just the L fund that would be based on your age. The change your investments tab, uh, that page shows you how to do an interfund transfer and a change of fund allocation. The stick to your plan page, right? Here's the first paragraph of that page. Once you've, once you've established your retirement goals and a savings strategy that fits your needs, you'll have the best results if you stick to your plan. Don't get sidelined by distractions. Make adjustments to your strategy only after careful consideration. So stick to your plan. The only way the L fund, or the, not the only way the, way, the way the L funds are designed is to stick to the plan. It's not based on the market up and down. It's based on your personal circumstances, in this case, mostly your, your age and your proximity to, to retirement or when you're going to need the money. Um, and they, the ELF funds will do reallocate uh, quarterly. Actually, they, they rebalance daily and reallocate quarterly. And we're going to get into that uh, on the next page, I think. All right. So if you go to the, the Life Cycle Funds tab, okay, Here's really the definition of the L funds. The important thing to, to look at here is, is the last paragraph. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to read to you the, the first two paragraphs because it's really kind of not really necessary. Um, one of the important things about the L funds is that they stick to their target allocations for a full quarter regardless of what the markets do. Every trading day, some of the core funds in the L funds will do better than the other funds, right? The L funds are made up of the C, S, I, F, and G funds. So on every trading day, one of those funds is going to do better than the rest of them, okay? At the end of the day, the core funds funds that did better will make up a higher percentage of the L fund than the ones that did less well. Makes sense. To maintain each L fund's target allocation we rebalance at the end of every trading day. We do this by buying and selling the core funds that make up the L funds so that the percentages go back to what they were at the beginning of the day. In effect, we're buying low and selling high at the end of every trading day. That is one of the biggest, uh, let me just say misunderstandings, or (laughs) the idea that you are buying low and selling high the, the flip side of that is you are, you are selling the, the core funds that did well so that you can buy the core funds that did less well. Does that make any sense to anybody? I think it makes sense to some people. I'm not sure why, though. I haven't figured out. Like, so stop betting on the winning horses. Exactly. Let's, let's bet, let's on, bet the on the loser horses. Because the more you lose, the more value there is because the price is lower. Like, yeah. I... I don't get it. Yeah. I I will say that I, I do get it. Again, I always talk about the brokerage account versus a retirement account. Sure. There are reasons and and, and, way, and there, there are a methodology, there are methodologies I, I would buy into if we were talking about a brokerage account. If I was talking about a single stock or a group of stocks, you know, an index, an ETF, whatever. Yeah. And I was doing this in a brokerage account where I'm worried about, Tax implications. Yes. You know, all that's true. All, all right. that. Because that's where this stuff comes from, and that's where nobody gives any context. When you hear someone talking about, and I don't mean someone in our Facebook group, I'm, I mean like a financial expert. Yep. When you hear them talking about these things on Bloomberg and CNBC and Yahoo, whatever, what they're really talking about are the tax implications, yep. right? 
and uh, capital gains, those things. Yeah. We're not as concerned about those. We aren't concerned about those. No. None of that has an effect within an, the TSP. In an IRA or TSP or, you know, potentially 401k, because we're not we're not affected by that. We can move without those tax implications. That's the right. whole point. Right. The whole point is we're outside of that realm. So you're not able to take advantage of some of those nuances where at the end of the day, what you're really doing is you're pouring money into a thing that's not performing well. Right. Instead of pouring your money into something that is performing, is performing well. Yeah. And that does not compute. Right. And if, right. if, if, again, if somebody's watching this that has a better explanation that you convince us otherwise, yeah. I'm happy to hear it. Yeah. I haven't been able to figure it out, but so, I'm not that smart of a person. So, so here's why they do it, right? They, they have a, a methodology, and the methodology says for this quarter, this, L, this particular L fund needs to be uh, 50C you know, 25S, 25I, right? And that quarter fits into all the other quarters as it's rolling because you're going to decrease your exposure to the stock funds as you uh, move along in your career if you, if you buy the L funds, right? If you bought the L, you know, if you, if you come in in, uh, in 2020 and you're going to do a 30-year career, you say you're going to buy the L2050, Right, because mm-hmm. that's that's what it would recommend to you based on your age, or even farther out if you somehow think that that's sure. riskier, F- further out, or, uh, whatever, more aggressive, yeah. whatever. Um, so, so you you buy the L fund, say you buy the twenty fifty, um, and say it's let's pretend it's it's fifty C, you know, twenty five S twenty five I. There's going to be a little bit of G and F in there, but whatever. As the years go by, that twenty fifty fund is going to be less exposed to stocks and more exposed to bonds, regardless of what the market's doing. Right, regardless of the market. So each quarter those percentages of the core funds change. Within the quarter, the percentages need to stay the same based on the, the, the not the algorithm, but the philosophy of the fund, mm-hmm. right? So the that's why- The distribution of the allocations. Right. So that's why every day, they, they make sure that they go back- They rebalance. And they rebalance every day to make sure that they're back to those percentages. Which is that, not a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing if you're trying to meet the definition of the L fund. It's not a good thing- if in terms of the market. Maximize your market potential. Yeah, yeah, right. right. I mean, I, 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 it's just the thing making itself be right <laughs> is all it is. Yeah. <laughs> so I, any, any, you know, to, to us anyway, any methodology that does not take into consideration what the market is doing now is pretty fallible. Yeah. I, I mean, there are more people that would disagree with what we're talking about than agree. And that's fine. I yeah. mean, at some point we're going to get people on, we're going to figure out a way to get bring people on, on the show yeah. and, and we can have it out. But, uh, I, I, I don't, I, you just want to keep going with the thing because I don't even, it just totally spins me up. The, the Yeah. The idea of the L fund, if you guys can, you know, gather that we're not huge fans. I mean, Jerry wrote an article about it probably two years ago. It's on our on our websites, on our blog. Um, it, you know, it's free from the free side. That lays it out pretty simple as to why, like, you know, we're not a big fan. Now, I, we will say that if you know, and let's goes back to the to the Facebook question. If you know, you're just in a point in your career where, like, in your career and your personal life, where, like, I got kids, I got you know, my job going on, my job's uh, got a lot going on. Maybe I'm going to college at night. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever your personal circumstances are, if so much is going on where you can't focus and you and you feel okay with like the methodology in the L fund, then go for it. Absolutely. It's better than leaving it in the G fund <laughs> yes. forever. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? right. We get a lot of flack for putting our money in the G fund, but we don't put it in there forever. No. We just park it there yep. while the market's going down. When it starts going back up, well, you gotta jump back in. Right. But the point is is if, if if all else is off the table and your choices are Set it, forget it, or put an L fund. I'd put an L fund. Sure. Now, if if you can give it ten minutes, twenty minutes a week, then don't do that. Man, manage your account because yeah. you you can you can look at the market for twenty minutes on a Saturday or a yeah. Sunday, figure out what you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, you can do the L sixty five fund is the furthest out, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's the most it's, aggressive. It's the most aggressive. So and it's, it's it's funny because I'm I'm waiting for somebody. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, uh, interrupt a question that would have been coming. Uh, because we generally do uh, uh, an even mix of the stock funds when we're in the stock funds, right? So right now, 
uh, as of some time in July, we've been 34% S, uh, 33C, 33I, right? You could you could say that that's essentially the same as the L65 fund, right? Except so, we won't keep it that way. We won't keep it there. <laughs> now, could you trade the L funds on a technical analysis sort of basis? Could you just say, okay, all right, I see what you guys are doing. I don't want to mess with the the CSNI and, and the percentages and all that. I'm just going to, when when the market... Go between like L2065 to and L20. No, and G. G. Yeah. Or, or I mean, going between two different L funds, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show why that's just That'd be ridiculous. a headache. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you, if you went, if you didn't want to mess with uh, managing the underlying CSNI um, interfund transfers, sure, buy the, buy the L twenty sixty five, and you're almost hundred percent stock funds, and then when the market rolls over, because you've already drawn your channel lines, when the market rolls over, move it to the G. And then, and then when the market bottoms, move it back to that L fund. Or I mean, the, that's a the, way to do the it. The farthest out L fund, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, we're not recommending that. That's just kind of like a... Uh, yeah, this is off to- completely off the top of my head. I mean, that's the yeah. only way you, I, in my mind... You the, could justify yeah. doing it. And I wouldn't do that. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Because I, we may see a point where the I fund or the S fund or the C fund, one of the three, right. are just... Tanking. Crushing it or tanking, yeah. One, one, or, one or the or other. The other. Yeah. And why would you be in it if it's right. tanking? Right. You'd, be, you'd be in CNS instead of CSNI. That's why. Right now, we just happen to be because all three of those market, the, all three of those charts are telling us that, all right, it's a good time to be in. Yeah. There is plenty of opportunity. I mean, you guys can go see our allocations. Uh, the current ones are never there, but you go to our site and you see the allocations. You can see, I forget how far back we go, pretty far yeah, back. Yeah, a couple years. Yeah. And and you can see how so many times we are not evenly distributed against those three Absolutely. Yeah. because the market was going in a different direction. Right. We're like, well, I'm not going to be in the S just because yeah. it should be. So that's why the L2065 plan wouldn't work. Right. Right. Because right. you're saying, right. but you'd be making a lot of money on that 30%, Right. but you'd be, Losing it on, on the, the other thirty yeah. percent. Why would you do that? Yeah, just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. All right, now, yeah. we've beat it up enough. Right. The uh, elf fund has got bruises right now. Elf fund's got bruises. I, I'm going to get bruises from the Facebook comments. I can. I can. I'm looking I can, forward to them. I, can see I just it already. I just you know you got to have time to, <laughs> to answer them. <laughs> okay, so let's let's just use this as an example the L65 fund because it's the furthest out. Okay, um, so definitely go to the tabs. You know, there's some. Uh, relatively useful information in there about why I should invest in the L65 fund and uh, am I okay with market and inflation risk? It's kind of a joke that that's even in there because it doesn't really talk about market risk and or inflation risk, but it basically says, you know, I, uh, the, the L65 is the most volatile and are you okay with that? Um, and then how can I use L65 in my TSP? Um, so the, the goal of it, right, the, the investment objective uh, is to achieve a high level of growth with a very low emphasis on preservation of assets. <laughs> so if you are in the L fund, L65, the, 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 what they quote unquote most risky fund, um, what, what they're saying there has a very low emphasis on preservation of assets means that the allocation that they put towards the G and F funds are, are very small. And so here's the allocation, the current allocation of the L65 fund, 2065 fund. Um, here's something that, that people don't, uh, I don't think really get this, the, um, actually let me just read off my notes before I get too sidetracked. So the, the, um, the S fund, right. In the riskiest L fund right now, the S fund is extremely underrepresented in all the L funds, whether it's the L6 2065 or any of the earlier ones. The, the S fund is very underrepresented. Underrepresented, um, they're all C fund heavy. Okay, a major correction or an extended bear market is going to crush the far out L funds uh, because they only have a, a combined between the G and F. Your com- your combined uh, safety net is one percent. One percent of your allocation is relatively safe and, and only a third of a percent is actually uh, safe by law. So you're in trouble in a major correction. The closest L fund, right? The least risky other than the L income fund is the L 2025. 
right? That's, a, that's four years down the road. That fund is allocated almost 50% stock exposure. So I didn't put the chart up of it, but if you go into the tsp.gov site, the, the least risky L fund, except for the L income fund, right? The least risky one, L2025, is almost, it's like 45% stock exposure. So another 50% bear market will seriously hurt you if you're in an L fund, regardless of which L fund you're in. Uh, until then, uh, rock on in the L fund if that's your choice. I mean, if that's your thing. Uh, but I think we, we pretty much put out what we think about the L funds. All right. Moving on. Bonus chart. KRE is the regional bank ETF index. This is the one we looked at last week. Um, we actually looked at this on the member-only call oh. the other day. Um, it all starts to run together. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we spent an hour or more talking about Fibonacci retracements and extensions and the Elliott wave count for, uh, I don't know, five or six different examples. What's the short version? Um, the short version is this is the, the, the one chart. So um, all I really wanted to show here was kind of a combination of all that stuff that we kind of talked about. So the regional banks... One, A, B, C, so one, A, B, C, two, three, A, B, C, four. Okay, that's the Elliott wave count of the KRE. If you overlay that with the uh, Fibonacci retracement levels. Which are what all those numbers are. Yep. And if we, we did, lines. we again, the, we, we went into it in a super deep dive on, on the member-only call. But the length of this move is 0 to 100. The length of this, so this was the, the 1. The ABC2 took us back to 61.8% retracement. So this move... Retracement means how much came back off of it. 61.8% of this move was lost to here. That's a classic uh, support level for Fibonacci, for, for Fibonacci analysis. And it did it on the Elliott Wave ABC. So this was a great expected point where the regional banks would, would take off again. And they did. So then if you take... We're looking for a target, right? So they, the regional banks take off again. Great. How high will they go? The first thing they have to do is get above this prior top, right? If they get above that prior top, how high will they go? The, the theory is the target, the first target, if they get past this top, which was 100%, they get past that, then they go to uh, a 161 or 1.618 um, extension beyond that 100%. So if you take this distance here and you multiply it by 1.618, you get this number right here. And that's exactly where it went to. All right. So this is a great example. You got this distance on the 1. You get the 61.8 retracement for the 2. You got a 1.618 movement for the three. You got an ABC for the four. And you can see that the price has already, we, we hit that four and the price has already started going higher. So how high can the price go in the five? Again, the theory is if the three leg is an extension, which it is, then the one leg tends to be the same length as the five leg. So all I did go into big charts and I drew this line and I took this line and I moved it up here. So the target for the top is right there. So if you wanted to buy the KRE, it's not going to go, it's not, it's not going to happen in a straight line. It's going to do, I mean, who knows what. At some point, 
this is the target, whatever price that ends up being. I don't know, 100, let's say. That's how you use Fibonacci and Elliott Wave analysis to try to uh, both figure out where the support levels are going to be and what the expected top is going to be before the next retracement. It's just a really, really good example. Okay. And again, we did a, a really, really big deep dive into um, a whole bunch of different examples of that uh, at the members only call. And I'm going to do it something kind of similar on the newsletter um, that you can read right now that I think about it because it's coming out at the same time. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. Last part, TSP funds. Um, it's kind of the most boring part of the show here because it's been a very, very boring last couple of months. It's not boring. It's just, you know. I mean, it's it flat, is what it is. flat, flat, flat. <laughs> and price keeps going up, up, up. You know, everybody's inc- happy. Incrementally, everybody's happy. No one's watching the show. No one's paying attention. The, the markets go, market always goes up. Everybody knows that. Um, and uh, as, so much. <laughs> as long as the, again, we are 100% invested in the stock funds. So we are getting all these gains. As the market keeps going up, we're going to continue to get those gains, knowing that at some point the market's going to correct. But for the time being, C fund is going up. It's above its 10 week moving average, which corresponds roughly to the 50 day moving average, but it's above that red line, the 10 week moving average. Uh, no reason not to be in the C fund right now. S fund, we've talked about it a million times. We had a really big run up off the COVID low and we've gone flat ever since. Until that flat consolidation gets resolved one way or the other, uh, there's not a whole lot you can do with the S fund. Ordinarily, a flat consolidation resolves in the direction of the prior trend. So here's the prior trend. Theoretically, the market should do like that. Will it do that? I have no idea. Um, if it gets above, you draw the channel lines. If it breaks above the channel lines, it keeps going. If it breaks below the channel line, it keeps going down. That's what I would be looking at on the S fund. I fund is actually, it's done better than both the C and the S for the last couple of weeks, and it's in a really great position. One, two, three, four, which I have a problem with this four, because the two and the four should be relatively symmetric, and they are not even close. So I have a very hard time calling this piece alone a four. Um... It wouldn't surprise me if the iPhone rolled over and we get something like this and, and that's the four and it keeps going. Um, but for the time being, uh, the iFund looks pretty good. Uh, we have RSI is moving higher. It's not overbought yet. MACD is looking good. It's trying to turn positive and slow stochastic has already crossed and, and uh, looks really good. So, the iFund looks really good, at least for the time being. F-Fund, uh, again, we do a deep dive into the F-Fund chart in the weekly newsletter this week. Um, in, the, in the newsletter, we're looking at the six-month daily charts and applying Elliott Elliot Wave analysis, as well as Fibonacci retracements and extensions. It's kind of hard to see it on this 18-month weekly chart, but the move since the March low... This move right here has been absolutely textbook. You definitely do not uh, want to miss the newsletter this weekend. And I'm also going to do a little video that kind of talks through the newsletter. We started doing that last week and we got a lot of really good feedback. Questions. That's it. I'm out. I'm going to get it clobbered on Facebook and I can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. (laughs) <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about yeah. you. Um, yeah, but Jerry just kind of glazed past that. But um, so now, you know, we've been doing the newsletter. Well, Jerry's been doing the newsletter for, I don't know, 15 years or something. Yeah. But um, <laughs> when it was a pencil and paper newsletter, it was, basically. Yeah, when it was actually paper. <laughs> yeah. Then it went to PDF. Yeah. Um, but anyway, 
you know, the blog post that comes out for uh, people who are subscribed to our site, they get the newsletter, has lots of analysis, but what Jerry started doing is actually including a video in the newsletter because a lot of folks were having a hard time just kind of like, you know, processing it by reading, by reading it, it. Yeah. and with you explaining it while we're looking at it, which I, I get that, I get the benefit of that all the time. Yeah. And it's, you know, it was my input that Jerry was like, man, when I hear you explain it, like I got it, you know, I don't, I don't even need to read it. Like I understand it. Yeah. And so we're trying that now. We're going to keep doing it until somebody tells us we shouldn't, <laughs> but, uh, now we got great feedback last week. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I think, I think it's leaps and bounds ahead of, uh, of anything. And, uh, Jerry is, uh, you know, uh, nice enough to sit down and do a little more work and put a video yeah, out, yeah. right? Uh, so puts a video. It's actually in the blog post, so you'll find it in the blog post on the site. Uh, if you're not a member, not sure why, but yeah. you should be. <laughs> you know what? We get that question all the time on Facebook. I'm not a member. How do I be one? Yeah. Go to growmytsp.com. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it's right there on the front page. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so – if you're if you're if you like what you're hearing, please share it with your friends. Yep. We're here every week, six thirty <laughs> uh, on Sundays. Uh, this comes out on post. Facebook, yep. and then it comes out on YouTube, and anywhere else you find a, a video. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, hope bro. you have a great week. Uh, had a, had a great weekend and great week coming up. Uh, talk to you later. We're out.